Uh, all right. It's a... I was saying... Everything broke today. That's what I was saying. That's why I'm late. <laughs> and, uh... Yeah, everything's been kind of... Broken. So I lost the camera, I lost the stream deck, and then I lost my mic. All simultaneously. Uh, great start to find that at, like, 9.28. We are gonna do a stream, and here's the plan. In the last update video, I missed that there are some changes for MIDI. That's something we can explore today. I still haven't really looked at it. There's mainly things related to chasing MIDI CCs. I don't really know what that means. I would like to build a sample drum kit, and I'm going to leave it up to the chat for deciding which drum kit we are going to do that with. I need to do a poll. Okay, so to describe this better, there was a sample drum kit, a 707 kit, uh, as a free download mentioned in the last stream. I want to know which sampler you would like to see RS5K, Reaper's sampler, uh, Satala, or Speed Drum, or XO. Those are the options today. So you should see a poll there right now. Next thing you'll have Reaper blast you with 300 dB in your headphones. <laughs> yeah. So far, this is not the worst. We've had technical difficulties. I mean, if you have to restart the computer, that's kind of the worst case scenario because you gotta reconnect to the stream and everyone's gone, but... Kenny demoed Satala. I did it first. He never used any of them, so no real preference. He loves Satala, but you're learning Spark 2. It's old, but it works wonderful. Yeah, we mentioned Spark a while ago and I was recommending against it, but I've never used the software. Satala's my go-to for custom kits when I'm not using Addictive Gems 2. For free stuff, I've been using the SSD 5.5. Yeah, but you can't import your own samples with that one, I think. XO you've seen many times on YouTube. Do you have a Reaper template and your custom shortcuts somewhere free to download? Like my theme? No, I don't. Um, I've shared it with one or two people, but it looks different on every computer. And I just don't have the time to like troubleshoot all those little things. My custom shortcuts and things like that, on my email newsletter, every time I email, there's a link at the bottom to a download that has all the stuff that I've shared over the years, or pretty much all the stuff I've shared over the years. And there's a lot of custom actions. If I've made a video about it, there's probably a download link for those things in there. But the actual Reaper theme I haven't shared. Christopher Butler, I finally buckled and bought Easy Drummer 3, which I have not even had time to start trying out. I've only used Easy Drummer 2, and I did really like it. Um, within its limitations, there's a ton of good stuff in there. I haven't looked at Easy Drummer 3 at all, but actually there is something in the news that I will mention for that uh, when we get to that time. Is a poor form to ask questions in these streams? No, that's what these streams are for, for connecting with the community and answering questions. If it's like a highly specific problem on your system, um, maybe that's not the best place for it. But if you just have something, some general, how to do something in Reaper kind of question, then um, yeah. If you have like a very specific issue, um, I'm available for one-on-one -on -one lessons, consulting, troubleshooting sorts of things, mix critiques. Um, over Zoom, it's one hour, $50. There's a link on the website for that. So you want a private lesson? Here you go. If you want to just send an email, the contact us link. You can fill out this form, and send me an email. If you want to get on the email newsletter, it's the newsletter thing here. I email when there's a new update video and like a monthly recap of the previous month of videos, live streams, things like that. Rarely anything else. Um, I'll also email if there's a sale on the courses. If you didn't know, I've got some courses available on the website. That's it for that. So let's go into the news. 
Speaking of Easy Drummer 3, there's a synth wave expansion. I mean, they're advertising directly to me and Jason probably. 20 mix ready kits tailored for synth wave inspired modern pop music based on approximately 440 individually engineered sourced sounds. Produced by Grammy Award nominated Belgian DJ, producer, and composer Timofey Reznik Reznikov. <laughs> should probably proofread this before I try to say it live. Yeah, it's a mix of, of organic and electronic drums. $89. Yeah, seems cool. Um, there is not a demo here, but there is probably on the website. There's act um, Chris, there's actually a second one. There's easy keys. So um, there's both. There's a drum one and a keys one. Yeah, there's a lot of content on the website for this. Let's just link to that. Let's be nice. They didn't pay me to say this. Um, we'll send them a link because it looks like a cool pack. Now let's go to the next bit, bit of interesting thing that I found. Kick drum generator, free online kick drum synth. This was, I saw this um, shared on Twitter this morning. A simple online tool to generate free synthesized kick drum, bass drum sounds. Just tweak the parameters for the tuning, pitch, decay, release, distortion, and bit crushing. Gain compression until you get a kick drum sound that sounds just right and click on the download button to download the wave for that kick drum sound. So limiter on the kick sound at zero dB to protect the output. Double click any of the controls to reset the control to its default setting. Hit spacebar to trigger the kick drum sound. This is from muted.io slash kick. Wasn't Synthwave a thing like years ago? They probably are a little late to uh, to the genre, but I know it's still going to be good quality. I think the people that like that style of music are just going to keep liking that style of music for quite a while. There's a lot of crossover between synth wave and uh, and metal listeners. Here's a kick drum that I made up with this free online generator thing. I think it sounds pretty cool. So I'll turn off the bit crushing. There's more of a retro tom sort of sound. And yeah, low tuning, long release. Now let's make a tight punchy one. That's a weird one. Yeah, so if you like that, you can just hit download and then it'll save that to your um, downloads folder. Couldn't be easier. On this website, there's also a ton of other really interesting things. Like there's a circle of fifths, uh, interactive chart, uh, intervals charts, cheat sheets, tons of stuff. Really nice looking website. Um, very interactive, informative, awesome stuff. I've never heard of this before, but I'll probably be visiting this a lot. What were the poll results? Satala with 57%. I guess we can get started with that. So uh, there was a question here about Satala. Uh, is there a M1 ARM native version? There isn't yet. They said they were going to do it in August, last I looked. They're very busy with the iOS version right now. They will probably eventually get to it, but it's not um, M1 native yet. It will still work. Let's do a multi-track out. We're gonna start with a new kit. 
in my downloads, I've got the Studio Brutal 707 drum kit. There's actually two kits in here. You guys can hear this, I hope. We've got 16 pads and we've got how many drums? 13. And in this kit, there are 15. So we got enough. Perfect. I'm going to first get this whole folder into, um, into my sample library instead of my downloads folder. Okay, and sort this with a yellow tag. I'll probably just import it through Finder. You could do it through the built-in browser in Satala or from Reaper's Media Explorer. Yeah, we'll do it this way. Just drag and drop. Let's do a do a C sharp for the the rumble sample. And stop me if there's anything so far that um like if I'm going too fast or anything. Making these sort of drum kits actually very simple when it's not multi sampled and everything it's pretty quick just have a general idea of where you want the notes to be mapped across the keys and that's about it i mean even if you get it wrong you can just drag and drop to to move it basically as we're doing here we're gonna have a uh, kick on the lowest note a kick rumble on the black key above that and we can set this to um to trigger whenever the kick drum triggers which no other way around turn that off trigger kick rumble so now both are triggering at the same time open hat on the other black key let's put that high tom on the f and the low tom on the g get that rumble on a above that we'll make sure that low tom also triggers the low tom rumble and what do we have left crash here i'm not too picky about where they go we've we've got a couple extra slots so and I can always move them around. I got a, a clap and a cowbell. No, I got the clap. I'll put the ride there. I'll put the clap. No, put the cowbell there. Something like that. I'm not too picky other than like where the kick and the snare go. Where did you get the other kits? Actually, you know what? I didn't put the link to where I got this kit from. So that was from last week's stream. That was this one. Okay, so uh, this is a collection of 707 drum samples uh, from the TR-707 you know, vintage drum thing, <laughs> drum box. Um, and it's just a basic 28 sample pack. So it's variations of, of two complete kits. The kind of unique thing is that there's these rumble sa uh, samples along with it. So that's this thing that we, we're going to trigger at a lower volume, maybe 12 dB lower. Because when that's off, wait, I muted it and it's still triggering. Is that a bug? <laughs> um, Oh, I guess it's just a little bit more. There's, it's isolating that rumble, but we could tune it down. Let's tune it down an octave. And that's pretty cool. We'll get back to Satala specific things in a sec. This is the the starting point on the kick or on the the kit. We've got our 13 samples imported. 
Satala has 16 slots available. With the right-click menu, we can do things like trigger and choke. Trigger means to also send a note on to another key automatically, which is good for the kick and the kick rumble. Then there's the choke function, where if you have the, um, the closed hi-hat and the open hi-hat, and you want the you want the closed hi-hat to cancel an open hi-hat, right-click on the closed hi-hat, go to choke, and then we're going to choke the open hat. You'll be able to feel that change more easily um, when you're actually triggering it from MIDI. So uh, those are kind of the common things to do. You could do something kind of cool like choking the kick rumble with the snare. So the, the snare uh, kills that rumble. But a kick by itself will have lots of rumble. I don't know. And here it is before. So depending on the complexity of your pattern, that might be a useful thing to do. In Satala, we've got our kind of preview of the note. Uh, of the imported sample. There's trim functions at the top left and right of the interface. These arrows will will cycle to the next sample in that folder. You can play a whole sample, select a whole sample, or reverse sample here. So um, oh yeah, you can also just drag in here to create your selection. And when you're dragging this, it actually snaps to zero crossings, which is pretty cool. For the shape, that's they don't really use an ADSR. They use a shape control, which is if you turn it up above uh, above zero, that's going to fade. Off to so that's fading the start, and then turning it down tightens it up. Oops. So it's not really an ADSR, but it's close enough. For triggered drums, it's basically all you need. Soften the attack or make it tighter. Then there's a tuning control, and as you're doing that, you actually see the where the frequency will shift to. So you, you can see like the fundamental frequency of that kick drum is at, I don't know, 50 or, or so hertz. We can move that down to 40 um, or up to 100 and without the rumble. Which is pretty cool, a really nice interactive sort of thing. You very rarely see any sort of graph for tuning. So I find that really helpful. Compression is going to be, I believe this is sort of like a, kind of an AI assisted sort of compression. So the compression shape is going to depend on the, the waveform. So the shape of that compression curve is going to be a lot different depending on the type of sound. And you can see that in that, 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 gold line, that yellow line. I keep accidentally dragging. So it gets pretty heavy with that. Then there is the, the tone control, which is kind of a smart EQ. And you can see just dragging through here, there's many different shapes that it will do. So tone all the way up is a very steep, um, very drastic high pass, and the opposite all the way down. But in between, there is places where there's a mid dip, there is a, a mid boost, um, and the mid sweeps up while bringing in a low filter. There's a lot of kind of quick variations here that you can get. 
There we go. So, snare. Um, this does link velocity to volume. There's no sort of randomization kinds of things built in. For a free plugin, this is really great. It's a little behind on getting the Mac version updated, but they've been focused on the iOS version. Um, yeah, there's a lot of cool stuff, but it's like very focused on, on a very kind of specific workflow. It's 16 pads, no multi-layers no round robin uh what else what else is there no no round robin no multi-sampled layers no real effects other than eq and compression um there's also a panning and volume here which i didn't mention but it's pretty obvious in the little drop down menu here there's a couple other um just various options jason get, makes a good point there the multi-out really makes a lack of built-in effects not a huge issue. Exactly. I will get to multi-out. That's why we did that. that um, all these tracks here. Let's go for like minus three on each of them. All right, so that rumble is way too loud. Okay, so this this is a, a such a classic sound, but it's uh, it doesn't really blend with the snare anymore. So I'll probably just do that really scooped version of it. Is Baby Audio smooth operator like Sooth? It. It is similar to that. Uh, I've done a couple videos on Smooth Operator. It is on sale right now. That's one of the affiliate links I was trying to find, but I wrote it down somewhere. I don't know. I thought I had an auto-complete thing for that, but um, it's good. I've EQ'd that. I'm just going to bump up the volume, I think. Hopefully that's not feeding into my mic too much. I can actually switch to headphones just to avoid that. Ah, 300 dB. <laughs> this kick is brutal. It's, it's like...
Yeah, the uh, the hi hats. Do you do you guys ever get that thing where you hear a sound and like it, your ears like clamp down? I get that a lot. Certain sounds. I try the same setting for the EQ and see if if that actually kind of matches up. I hate the crash. The crash is like the worst part of that. I'm finding myself shifting these these notes directly to one of these lines for some reason. I know it doesn't make any sense, but but it does sound better at exactly that spot. <laughs> okay. even less of that. All right, so got a basic kit there. Let's put in a pattern. Like Satala automatically gives Reaper the note map name. I don't know how they do it. Most other instruments don't do that, but they do it really well. So I can just hit my drum mode and it's just the, the drum pieces that I'm using. I'm on a 16th note grid. Uh, let's just put in um, something.
There's some function that I forget what it's called where the cursor moves when you click on a note. I don't want that to happen, but it is happening. All right, I don't like that kick anymore. It's pretty bad. We've got a kit, we've got a sample pattern. Let's save the kit, or save the kit by going to that menu there, add to user kit. This is a um, brutal 707. Okay, yeah, so it's there. These are the Verum Audio um, Uh, what are they called? They're they're like crazy. Verum one. Um, I was sent them for a review. The coffee is ice cold. Uh, yeah. The I don't know. You're gonna have to find that the video. I. I'm just drawing a blank on what it's called. It's 10.30, and I haven't eaten, so that's when my brain shuts off. Now let's talk about um, multi-channel outputs. So everything right now is coming out of output 1, but this has up to 16 outputs. Oh, right, right, audio outputs. Oh, that's a fun bug. You can move the, the menu away from the, the interface. If you want multi-outs, there's 16, there's a stereo output option and then 16 channel output, one channel per pad. And that just routes that all automatically. You don't need to route manually. So now if I play this. And now we can do things like adding in a reverb and choosing um, how much of that goes where. So let's get that, uh, let's get little plate and let's get a little bit of that on um, most of these. That's too much, but it's fine. I made a mistake. I shouldn't have done it that way. <laughs> so. I don't have Sends Control set up on my X-Touch right now. So I have to do this the slow way. Seems like way more than 16 channels now. You get the idea. Once it's routed, which is just one click in Satala, to do that, you can add sends, you can add effects to each individual um, output. There is no like auto rename thing yet. That'd be nice. Um, but yeah, maybe they maybe they'll change that. They uh, they are Reaper users and they take advantage of some of the Reaper specific functions like what we saw with the the MIDI mapping names. That's super nice. No other company is doing that. 
But that's essentially it. That's that's essentially how you create a take a sample pack and turn that into something that you can play on Satala. Okay, and if you miss the link to where those those samples were from, you can uh, scroll up in the chat. In Reaper 6.77, there were changes um, affecting MIDI that I kind of missed or ignored. One of the things on my list that didn't go into the video was rename named notes drum map action for consistency with menu items. I, I just didn't feel like mentioning that in the end. At that time, I thought that that was basically all that there was, but there's actually changes related to chasing MIDI CCs. Do not chase NRPN when seeking or splitting. Global option to not chase MIDI note ons also prevents chasing of MIDI CC, PC, and pitch. When disabling note chasing via option, fix cases where notes starting exactly at edit cursor may not get played. Fixed looping item detection when splitting MIDI items. Add preference to disable CC and program change chasing when splitting MIDI items. I think that's it. I don't know exactly how to demonstrate that, but let's start with looking for that setting. So if it's not under there, it's gonna be under media MIDI. When splitting a MIDI item, split the underlying MIDI data source, if possible, inserting new note on, on offs and optionally CC and PC. Then there's this chase CC PC. When splitting a MIDI data source, chase CC PC values for the new items. Put in a, a track, put in an item, and in here, let's let's put in like a a long note. And let's uh, let's have a program change in here as well. All right, so you can see here that I've got a MIDI note, it's long, there's a program change there. If I split this note, that is going to um, keep that note going. By, there's a new note on in that this MIDI item, and it's remembered that there's a program change earlier in that item. Let's undo, go back to the setting, and swap that. So we're going to undo allow trim of MIDI items when splitting. And so when I do that, program changes are not there. If I extend that out, it's it's still basically like the same item in a way. Hopefully that makes sense. So back to where we were. And uncheck chase CCs. Now, that looks weird. <laughs> so, hopefully that's visible now. Like, the, the difference here is when making that split, it's, um, allow trim is actually cutting that item into a new piece and this the content gets truncated and kind of added into the next item if i split this it's a new item this item is now truncated to where i split it this item has nothing before it and nothing after it but it did get that program change When this is off and allow trim is on, I split it. It's a new item. It looks like it changes pitch for some reason. The C2 is also C. I don't know why it looks like it's a different pitch, but um, but yeah, there's there's a new item here. 
with no with nothing before or after and this one is also trimmed and let's say we have allow trim off these item these two options are linked i think having it on is probably the the better way but i believe the default function is split basically makes a copy so this is a totally different sort of workflow splitting an item kind of references the original in a way makes a, a clone of it rather than splitting it like as if it was audio or it's a more destructive way but for me it makes more sense the reason i like doing it that way is or with having this on allow trim so let's say i've got this section and now i want to loop it like in item properties loop uh, loop source I will loop that section whereas with the other way having this allow trim off I want this section to loop make a copy of it you see that there's content before the uh, before this item start if I loop this item It's chaotic. I don't like that. But there's also this chase MIDI note CC pitch on project in project playback option here. AK5K, were you the guy that made the um, reef refab extension? I wasn't able to get that working. I was trying it yesterday. Okay. Should we look at that? Okay. So I downloaded it. It's installed. I see the scripts. Set hardware MIDI controller encoders to MIDI relative. I don't know if I can do that. Map corresponding MIDI controls to refab actions. Encoders in relative mode. Okay, MIDI input as in like track input or... So let's say I go to my... I'm on my launch control and I go to encoder encoder one, rotate that. It has to be encoder one. Or, uh, sorry, relative one mode. I need to do absolute, okay? Also need the monitor open. And then how do I get this to... So I moved the encoder the script console window opened. If I try to do learn here with the same thing, I don't think it worked. So I wasn't I wasn't able to get that part working. I don't know if this part is right. Oh, okay, that wasn't clear. I didn't realize that the fab was for fab filter. What Reaper affects um should I try with it? Recomp? Oh. Okay. That makes a lot more sense. Encoder 1 is threshold, but I need to be on a relative mode. Is that right? Encoder 1 is threshold. I'm not seeing any response. It could just be my controller. Yeah, unfortunately, my relative controller is on the X-Touch, which needs a completely different mode to work. Another time. Okay, I don't think it'll be too useful for me with my my current setup. I could get my uh, my Nocturne. That has that has a uh, um, touch sensitive rotaries. Create custom mappings yourself with Rescript once you have working relative MIDI controller. Cool. Um, okay, we're not going to do that anymore today. Um, let's take a quick break. AK5K, you mentioned Ria LLM. I, I don't remember if I've got that. I've definitely seen it. So this script, Ria Lim, Reaper Low Latency Monitoring, will automatically um, bypass any effects that are not zero latency so that you can record to a track with minimal delay. And so that looks like this. We've got Refer here, and this, this plugin has 
4096 samples. And if I record and monitor enable this track, it gets bypassed for zero sample delay. If you often record through plugins or you're partway through mixing a song and you want to record another overdub, that can be a very simple uh, way to do that. What about when there are multiple tracks? So let's just duplicate this track a few times. So now that there's lots of tracks with lots of latency, if I record enable one of these, yeah, it, uh, it just does this one. But what if there's a, uh, what if this is a folder track? And then I record enable, I don't know, one of these. No, this one, this one. Yeah, uh, it'll do a parent track as well. Um, and if I have got limiters or something in the, in the master effects chain, um, that's going to bypass all the ones above. Only if modern enabled. So pretty useful, pretty simple, straightforward. That seems like something that would be good to have in a toolbar icon. So um, you can see what mode you're in, low latency or not. Baby Audio's Smooth Operator, it's similar to something like Soothe. It automatically kind of gets the spectrum of audio and you can apply like an inverse curve to kind of smooth out resonances and stuff. It's kind of an EQ, kind of like a dynamic EQ. There's a couple nodes here you can adjust. So you can um, grab the middle one and slide the whole thing up and down. You can adjust the curve. The further you turn it down here, kind of the more output volume you also get. It's a bit hard to explain. It's a weird one. It, it slices up your audio into many, um, many different bands. All right, so with the, you know, the basic flat curve, when there's more bass, more bass gets taken out. It's kind of just applying an inverse curve to whatever is there, but you can also be a little more surgical with it. There's a focus control, there's a solo thing. And you can use Reaper's Delta mode, Delta solo by alt clicking on the the button there and um, hear what it's taking out. So yeah, just three color options. There's a bunch of presets. There is um, high res and classic mode. Sidechain filter. So yeah, you can do like that dynamic EQ sort of thing or automatic dynamic EQ kind of thing along with an external source as well. I don't record in a treated environment. Will it help fix the bad frequencies in that situation? Yes and no. Depends on how, um, how bad those issues are. For a voice, it can kind of like treat some harshness in the voice. Weird resonances, sibilances, and things like that. Resonant frequencies, probably. I think they have a trial. Does anyone know of an action that'll zoom Reaper both vertically to the amount of tracks you have in the TCP and horizontally to the length, the longest recorded audio? Yeah, so I can be zoomed in here and then Alt-A zooms me out. Or I could have all the tracks. Look, actually, I don't do the track height. I used to. But my Alt-A is assigned to 
view zoom out project there's a vertical zoom to select the tracks if you could select all and run that yeah so here's the custom action we'll, we'll make a new custom action it's going to be um zoom full project hopefully you guys can hear me okay yeah i'm used to having headphones view zoom out project we need to select all tracks track select all tracks vertical zoom to select the tracks save current track selection and then at the end we're gonna restore save track selection all right that should be it that seems good that seems like a good custom action. I will copy that into chat. I feel like Arturia goes way too fast on new products. I, I've barely tried augmented strings. Like who has time to play with everything? I bought um, Analog Lab early in the year and I'm like spent zero time with it. All right. I'll log in and, and see what my upgrade price is. 249. Not bad. So if you're looking for a discount, they're offering a pretty decent discount. Does anyone really need 33 different emulations of classic synthesizers? No, just need one good one, right? You have V Collection 9 already. I'm guessing if you have 9, it's just a free update. It's only a, a decimal point update, I think. Let's see if I got some uh, updates. PG8X is free and fantastic. Covers so much analog ground. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, OBXD is another good vintage emulation. I mean, Analog Lab is good. If you don't have time to learn every single synthesizer, just go with the uh, Analog Lab. Yeah, I've got an update for that. Oh yeah, virtual instruments with a vintage analog kind of thing. Fury 800, pretty good. Reviewed that a while ago. Cherry Audio's got some good ones. Yeah, Cherry Audio has the 2600. I was logged in. I use this on stream. What's going on? Still use Tal Baseline almost 20 years later. Oh, is it actually 20 years old? OBXD updated recently. They've got a new um, preset management system. Used to be like hidden. You got to like right click and then go through all these settings. But now there's a bar here. So you can jump through, preview some next buttons. But still right clicking gets you the the different themes. It's interesting that it's even like different shape and different themes. I've always liked this one. Tal makes great plugins. I've got the um, Uno LX. This is a great one. And it got better, a lot better after I bought it, which is nice. That never happens. Superwave P8. Is that a, a free one? Ah, Windows only. The Yuhi plugins. Tyrell. This one's very good. This one's still one of my favorites, and it seems to support Apple Silicon, maybe? The distribution of this plugin was always kind of weird. It was exclusive for a magazine. Let's uh, let's put those drums back in. Make you suffer a bit with a, that drum kit again. Yeah, it, that's that's no good. May I just mute the rumble? It's hurting my ears. I wouldn't mind a tutorial on how to get a stream set up similar to yours. Yeah, that was supposed to be part of the studio tour video that I started in August, but hasn't come out yet. And I tried again in October. It's actually too complicated and too, uh, what do you call it? Fragile. 
to, to recommend. If you ask me specific which gear I use for it, I could give you that. I can link you to my kit page. I have everything that I use for my stream basically listed on this page. The video production, there's a PC version, cameras I use, lights and stuff like that. How do I get my drum sequencer to look like that? There's a couple things. There's the appearance of, from the theme, which you would change in, in the theme development configuration window. Look for MIDI, MIDI editor background colors. Just make some adjustments there. Save that as a new theme. There's that, then there's, um, I've got what's called a drum edit mode, which is essentially going from this view for piano roll, where where you have to choose a note length to um, setting the notes to diamonds, um, hiding, where is it, view, show hide note rolls. I'm setting this to hide unused and unnamed. That's basically it. Yeah, it's a custom action, but it just basically does those those things. So I got a piano mode or normal mode and drum edit mode. Just hides the unused stuff. I was like, oh yeah, I'll just make it a quick drum beat and then add some synth bass to it. I'm like, I play the beat and I'm like, I don't want to do that anymore. And like that hi hat is. making the muscles in my ears like pulse really uncomfortably so maybe i won't do that but i'm gonna let's let's do a bit of quantizing not quantizing unquantizing so what's a good synth wave uh tempo One twelve. Let's try one twelve. Maybe I'll just get rid of the the high half for now. Add in OBXD. Let's go to the base bank. <laughs> do that round one. Just to get started. 16th note. Pulse thing. Why not? I tend to go for like a, a D to start with, and then I'll split that on the grid. And then I'll probably let's do like a sort of manual um, ducking. Maybe we'll just actually cut out every the quarter note grid. The only synthwave song I know is Blinding Lights, and that's 171. Yeah, it is more pop than synthwave, but it's taking a lot from that genre. I think it is better to um, to just sidechain it. So that note is there, but is this even velocity sensitive? That's pretty cool. Okay. Let's put on something to duck that, like duck, and I'm not even going to sidechain it. Okay, 
And then um, let's do another. There was a good. Um, Frankenstein? I want a uh, sustained note. Can you make the baseline slide? I was looking for a tutorial the other day and all I got was bends. Um, what you're thinking of is like a FL Studio exclusive feature probably. Bends are kind of similar, but that's about all you can do. I don't know why Reaper doesn't have that feature or what FL Studio is doing that's different. Okay, so it's going to be four of those, and then what note are we moving to? Why does the program change keep coming up? All of these need hi-hats now. Yeah, I'll do that. Okay, and then Duplicate over all of those, except for here. Shall just do that. Maybe an open hi-hat here. Maybe a crash in this one.
I want to start like automating, but at the same time, it feels like it's too early to start automating. But cutoff should probably be in there somewhere. And fuck it, I'll just draw something. Already better. All right, how about this one? Yeah, maybe I'll just crank that one up at the end of the, the pattern. Maybe no hi-hat for the first part. <sighs> New to Mac and wondering if you have a favorite audio routing program for production streaming like Jack. Looking to get Reaper into OBS without having to run a physical audio loop on my interface. Yeah, so um, what I use is called Caster. It's not free, but I think it's worth getting. Um, you get outputs from individual apps. Then you get um, plugin slots for each one, direct uh, recording option, and a direct output option. You get two main outs. Um, so there's there's my streaming output and my monitor output I can even um, I can choose which one is going to my headphones uh, this button there's a recorder built in so what I send is my mic signal here it goes to OBS through the direct out function the effects that you're hearing in my voice are just done through here I don't monitor it because of the latency but I could check 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 and it's like I don't know it's a bit later Ground Control Caster from Ginger Audio, gingeraudio.com. Uh, there's even like a built-in sampler thing. All this stuff is also uh, MIDI controllable. I've got a uh, Novation Launch Control XL on my desk for controlling the faders here. It's pretty helpful. If I want to unmute the music, I've got a, a button for that. I don't hear the music. Why don't I hear the music? Oh, it was right in between songs. That's what I use. I also have Loopback. Yeah. Loopback is a little more expensive. I need to run an update before I can open this. But uh, Loopback is, I think, 99 US for it. It doesn't have plugins, but it can do all the other things. It, it creates virtual sound card type things and paths that you can route and mix down and whatnot. Coming from Reaper, my monitoring effects chain, I've got this channel mapper down mixer, and I've got this set to 16 outs. I forget why it's 16 outs. Oh, because the, the rest are my normal audio outputs. My mic is separate. It does not go to Reaper. It goes directly to, it goes through Caster and then to OBS on its own channel. My Reaper uses a different audio interface entirely, and it's an aggregate audio device. So if we go to Audio MIDI Setup, this aggregate audio device is is my main audio interface for Reaper plus Caster. So this channel 1516 is, is my Reaper channel in Caster. So if I play from Reaper, you see that here. Outputs 1 and 2 go to my speakers. 1516 goes to Caster. My audio settings here, aggregate device. Put X for OTT on it. Yeah. It is actually crazy how much 
how much different um, or how much difference something like OTT can do. Ouch. Loud enough? Let's set this up. 16 channels, and then build multi-channel routing. Yes. And then this is my reverb. Use vintage verb. Actually, no. Let's go through a hardware loop. Let's let's use Rhea. Rhea. What the fuck is it called? <laughs> Insert. Reinsert. And I'll go through my Alesis. Okay. And here's my snare, I think. That's my snare. Yeah, so that's my MIDI verb three. Um, yeah, I don't know. Okay, so I'm thinking um, a long like filter maybe on everything. What's an interesting filter? Audio things. Did I miss something? I forgot the drums. Not what I was looking for. Maybe filter jam. Uh, 
no, I just want a basic, basic filter, turns out. Ladder filter? Let's try that. Yeah, so let's start like there. Let's do a envelope and where even was that? That's on the master track. Oh, it's got to be all the way up. <laughs> I should probably bypass it instead of opening it up. an idea what to play i'll save the project but i'll probably never open it ever again okay uh any questions in the pat in the the last 20 minutes of stream anyone have questions <laughs> what the fuck why is my that's funny i was turning on and off my thing and i was sending a midi note to that Anyone had issue with the new track height options? My track heights keep screwing up even after seemingly setting stuff back to how I had after the last update. It's a really weird thing. I don't know if it's just like Windows users that are having issues with this or just like laptop users, people with trackpads. On my system, I couldn't find any difference between themes. I could barely see any difference between the two different actions. Nothing seemed to be different and I can only really demonstrate what I see here. Yes, there are a lot of people that have some sort of issue with, with the, the new stuff. I unfortunately can't reproduce any of those issues here. Like this looks normal to you, right? If I do, what is that action here? I've got zoom vertical, vertically. The command ID is higher on that one than it is for this other one. Snap to theme to find sizes, which is the going by the action ID. It's an older one, I'm assuming. Windows 10, it, does it depend on each theme? When I have one track armed, I control mouse wheel down to reduce size, but other tracks increase for some reason. Huh, that's weird. Um, I know that the uh, track height is like a different set of actions adjust selected track heights. 
Yeah, I set up a custom action for that when we were testing this in the in the Reaper forum, because like the normal one seemed weird for a selected track. But if I just do um what is it? Track. Track height CC. Uh relative. It's very slow. I gotta like pull the mouse wheel nine times. Theme has no bearing. I set it to use the TCP height in RT config. Height in RT config. Well, RT config is there's a different RT config for each theme. So it should an update in testing. They're definitely changing things related to that. I mentioned that in the video that that is something that they'll be testing more. Uh, someone was asking a bit about a beta feature. It was a long time ago. Uh, dirt Dirt. What are your thoughts on the forthcoming fixed lane comping feature? I think it's great. I haven't really tried it yet. I've tried maybe a month ago the fixed lanes feature, but I didn't try comping with it. And I found the fixed lanes feature much more useful than free item positioning. Uh, there's a lot of smart things happening there and it's gotten a lot better in the past couple of weeks. Lots of good stuff being tested right now. Uh, Chris Norris, there's a lot of threads about the, the scrolling. It's weird because in my comments, there's a lot of people saying that they hated it or loved it. I saw zero difference, so it's just odd. But in the last stream, I downloaded a different theme after going through all of my themes and I didn't see any difference at all with either of the actions. Like they just are the same basically identical so uh we're gonna wrap up here thank you all for joining the live stream today had a great time got lots of stuff done i think this will be edited down into a decent video thanks for being here on a friday afternoon morning um save up your questions for next week i'll be here every week and uh yeah if there, see anything interesting on the forum or in music tech news, send me a link and I'll and we'll discuss it live. That's it. Um, where's the button? There's the button. Thank you all. I'll see you guys later.